Uh, you'll notice I'm not wearing my leather jacket this year, and I haven't arrived from Tunis, uh, just from Leeds. Um, but it is good to be back in this church. Uh, this is a great venue, and thank you, Kate, for chairing and hosting this uh, tonight. Um, friends, it's two minutes to midnight. We know that. We know that. And we know that now there was never a better time for us to challenge, for us to question, and I believe for us to rid ourselves worldwide of our nuclear weapons. Now, what can we do around the rest of the world? We can argue our corner. We have done that for decades now. Uh, we can argue again with our own government about our nuclear arsenal. But let me just allow you to think of a couple of things. Firstly, we know from a recent survey that's been done by YouGov that 70% of Labour Party members would support ridding us of our unilateral nuclear weapons, our weapons, uh, our unilateral, sorry, our unilaterally ridding ourselves of our uh, independent, so-called independent, uh, so-called nuclear deterrent. We know it's not a deterrent, and we know it's certainly not independent, but I won't go over that. I'm sure some of my colleagues will be mentioning that this evening. What I just want to share with you is some of my thoughts on not just how dangerous it is at this time to continue to perpetuate and increase the numbers of these weapons. Let's just think for a moment what might have happened uh, recently in Saudi Arabia had those drone strikes not been using conventional weapons, which did goodness knows enough damage, but if they've been using these so-called tactical nuclear weapons that President Trump has been on about. Uh, we would be facing Armageddon right now, I think, and it's bad enough using those uh, conventional weapons. But I think more worryingly is something that I was recently discussing with a former senior uh, Labour colleague who was in um, the it, it was in Tony Blair's cabinet, actually, and I won't mention the individual's name. But what he said to me was even more disturbing, and that is that his view, and having been somebody who had supported nuclear weapons in the past, and supported Britain's uh, independent nuclear deterrent, his view was that actually these weapons are only of any use as deterrents. And once they stop being a deterrent, then of course they're no use at all. Well, of course I can buy that. But more, more worryingly, his view was instead of spending the 105 billion plus, and we know it's a lot more than that, Kate, don't we? And I think CND's estimate is that it's considerably higher, on the renewal of the Trident nuclear submarines, if we spent a quarter of that on an army of software hackers, we might do a lot more good. Let me explain. His contention is that our weapons are utterly useless, not because uh, they would precipitate, their use would precipitate uh, nuclear Armageddon worldwide, but for a far more prosaic reason, and that is that he thinks, and he's got good reason to think this, that Russian hackers can already hack into the software systems that control these weapons. Now, I don't know enough about this to know whether that's true or not, but imagine for a minute that it is true. Not that they could actually set the weapons off, but that they could render them entirely useless. Well, I'd, I'd be quite happy about that, as long as we could do the same to theirs. But it seems to me that once that becomes generally known, and we need to spread this as much as we can, if it's true, once it becomes generally known that it's possible for somebody to hack into the software systems that control our nuclear weapons, then they stop being a deterrent altogether. Never mind the damage and harm they can done if, God forbid, they were ever used. So I just wanted to share that with you. It seems to me that now, more than at any other time in our history, is the time to reconsider the weapons. Now, just to conclude, if I've got enough, I've got a minute, a minute to conclude. On Friday of this week, I'm going to Geneva. And I'm going to meet not only the UN, uh, UN uh, disarmament ambassador, Aidan Little, who's a, a British uh, diplomat there, but I'm also hoping to meet the Irish ambassador, who's leading the way on the UN Treaty for the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. And more importantly, we're actually meeting ICANN. Uh, you don't need me to explain who ICANN is, or are. Um, but we're meeting them, and I'm going with Neil Griffith, our Shadow Defence Secretary because we want to find out what the mechanisms would be for the United Kingdom to sign up to that treaty. I'm not saying with party policy is changing yet, it isn't. But this is a really important stage in convincing our members, if they needed convincing, that actually we need to stop producing these weapons and owning these weapons. 
I'm not sure we, what we can do about the rest of the world, but signing up to that treaty, I think, would be a good start. I'll leave that with you. Thank you for listening.